All right, let's talk about a different kind of related rate. This is example four on page 152, and this is talking about uh, the speed of an airplane tracked by a radar, um, which is it really just uses the Pythagorean theorem. So this is how to work with right triangles. So you can look at the picture in your book. Um, I'm going to draw just a very rough sketch of what that picture is. So up here is where I have my plane, like so. And then down here is a house. It's not a very nice house, but you know, it'll work. And then I have a right angle here. And um, so here's what the problem says. It says an airplane is flying on a flight path that will take it directly over a radar tracking station, um, as shown in this figure. Okay, so this, this house is actually a tracking station. That was my fault, so the tracking station. So somewhere on top of this, there's a radar. So I'm going to go ahead and put a satellite dish. There you go. That's my beautiful satellite dish. It kind of looks weird. But anyways, okay. Um, and it says, uh, if S is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour, and S is this part here, and uh, S is going to be 10 miles, what is the speed of the plane? So this right here is going to be 6 miles. That's how far the plane is. Um, from the ground, and then what I'm what I'm uh, concerned about is the speed of the plane. And the speed of the plane, if I take a look at this picture very carefully, the speed of the plane would be denoted by this piece down here, because that's how fast that this plane is moving over a certain distance. So this is the kind of figure that I'm that I'm going to use. And let's go ahead and get our lists going again. So what do I know? And I'm going to do it this way so I've got some more space. I'm going to try to find. And then what is my related rate? So what I know is that S is decreasing um, at a particular rate. So that means DS DT equals, now since this is a decreasing rate, this is going to get a negative sign. So anytime you have a rate that's decreasing, going downward, um, it's going to be negative. And this is at negative 400 miles per hour. And this is when S is equal to 10 miles. Alrighty. And then it asks, what is the speed of the plane? So that's what I'm trying to find. Now, I want to use a variable that's already in my picture, and that would represent x. So I'm going to say dx dt. That's what I'm trying to find. So by using this kind of picture in right triangles, Pythagorean theorem should be the first idea that comes to mind. And we know what that is very well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write it down with the variables that I have in this picture. And since the 6 miles, if you look at my picture, the 6 miles represents the y-axis. So these are the two variables I'm going to use for this. And then s can just stay there. So this would look like x squared plus y squared equals s squared. Okay. So it tells me right off the bat that s is 10 miles, so I've got that information. y is 6. I'm, th I'm kind of thinking we're ready to go to go ahead and differentiate. So let's go ahead and do that here. And if we need to find more information along the way, we can stop and see if we can do that. So the derivative of x with respect to y, or of x squared, is going to be 2x dx dt. And I'm going to add that to 2y dy dt, and that's going to be equal to 2s ds dt. Okay, so let's see what we know. 
I can do the x because I know that I can find a value for x by simply using the Pythagorean theorem. So remember that s was equal to 10, okay? So just on a side note, I have to actually solve for x so I can plug it in here. So this is going to be x squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. That means x squared is equal to 100 minus 36, which is 64, and then the square root of that is going to be 8. And we're going to stick with the positive 8 because distance is never negative. So this is what I can plug right in here for x, and I'm going to split under my gnomes just so I can access it later if I need to. And dx dt is what I'm trying to find, so that's good. And y, I know what that is, so that's good. dy dt, hmm, I don't know that. So maybe we could come back to that. This s right here, I know. And ds dt, I also know, which is negative 400 miles per hour. So how are we going to find dy dt? Because that's the only thing I need in order to solve this. And if you run into this kind of situation, see if you can backtrack. Because I think I went one step too far, and I'm going to show you why. So this whole piece right here, if I were to backtrack this one step, this came from, if you looked at the bottom left-hand corner, that came from this y squared. And we already knew what y was. y was 6. So instead of me having to differentiate this entire thing, this, in essence, just represented 6 squared. And what is the derivative of 6 squared or of any constant? And the answer to that is 0. So this step was actually unnecessary. I did not have to do that. Okay? And if you run into a situation where there's just no way to determine a missing variable, try to backtrack and see if you went one step too far. See if there's somewhere else around it. So now from here, I'm going to go ahead and substitute my variables. x is going to be 8. dx dt is what I'm trying to find. This is all 0. This is going to equal 2 times s, which is 10, and then times ds dt, which is negative 400. And then from there, you can solve, and it's pretty simple from there on out.